Hi everyone and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today we're going to be diving into this T55 kit from Tamiya. As per usual, we'll be using photo etch upgrades. But this time, Tamiya included them. Usually this kit is around $120, but good things come to those who wait. This fantastic kit is currently on sale for $40. If you do go pick one up, make sure to send them an email telling them I sent you. Hashtag Tamiya please sponsor me. Ordered it? Good. Let's get this show on the road. So starting off, we have the one-piece lower hull. And actually, surprisingly enough, this one is pretty well detailed for a Tamiya kit. Um, in previous kits, they haven't really spent that much time on the detail of the lower hull, and I really appreciate it in this kit. Otherwise, it looks really nice, and the hull should go together really easily. So now we're going to move on to the upper hull. And like usual, Tamiya has molded the fenders and most of the upper body of the hull all in one piece. Um, surprisingly enough, this is actually a pretty well detailed piece of plastic, even though it is only in one piece. The louvers on the engine deck are actually really, really nice. And you can see there, are, there aren't a ton of pin marks on the underside of the fenders, which is gonna make them look really good. Um, when you fit the two pieces together, it's just perfect. They slot together, you put the little guide pins in the holes, and you can tell that once you glue it together, there's not going to be a seam line. You do not need to do any filling on this. And on that back panel, there's actually another panel that goes on and just covers over all of that. So this is going to be a really nice looking kit when it's done. Now we move on to sprue A, which is extra fuel drums, tow cable stuff, torsion bar suspension, uh, gear housing, which is kind of okay. It, the the texture is not great, but it's going to be covered by a drive sprocket anyway, so it doesn't matter. Then of course we got the road wheels, and there's no return rollers on a T55, so obviously we won't have those in this kit. We also have some ammo boxes, and you can see it's all really nicely molded like usual with Tamiya. Now, sprue B has all the turret pieces, and I actually removed the two turret halves to show you separately. So I'll just move those out of the way and we can work on the uh, sprue itself. You can see that we've got the hatch mantles, um, and there's multiple types. We've also got the hatches, and just little parts like that. There are some smaller detail uh, parts in a different sprue, but for this sprue, it's just hatch stuff, and then the turret halves. And actually, this is kind of a disappointing part of this kit. The texture is actually really nice. Um, I'm, I'm gonna redo it anyways, don't worry. And the weld beads are actually exemplary. I don't think I'm actually gonna have to redo them. Um, and you can see that there's actually a little bit of texture on those two rolled steel plates on top as well. But the pieces do not fit together well at all. As you can see here, there's a little notch there for interior interior detail and it actually comes with the seat so we might put that in and just paint it up you know just for fun but the pieces do not fit together well now if i can actually get them together you'll see that there are a bunch of gaps along the sides here and thankfully that's covered when you put it on but there's two gaps on front of the turret mantle and uh, that's unacceptable because you're going to be able to see that every time you look at the model um, so that's a bit disappointing I feel like to me it should be living up to its name of perfect fit. Um, I guess not. Now for Spruce C, this is machine gun, stowage boxes, uh, lights, barrel, unditching log, really anything you can think of that's going to be small accessories is on this sprue. A lot of stuff for the guns and also another hatch version which is for the machine gun. We're going to be using that. Um, you can see the two pieces for the light cage to protect the lights and actually we're going to redo those with a wire so stay tuned for that. Now I removed the turret mantle uh, canvas cover because it actually does look pretty nice and I think we're going to keep it so I wanted to draw a little bit of attention to it. So good job here Tamiya. 
Now moving on to sprue D, you can see that we have larger parts for the, spru uh, the, for the hull and also the, dry the commander figure. You can see the engine deck cover, the, the driver's hatch, fuel storage, um, stowage bins, drive casings, um, more stuff for the engine deck, and other stuff like that. Now, looking more closely at the figure, you can actually see it's a pretty nice figure. Do you guys want me to do it? I've actually never successfully finished a figure before, so this might be interesting to try. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Next we've got the uh, polycaps, the mesh for the engine deck, and the screens. I actually really like that the polycaps are separate. Um, they have no flash, which makes them really easy to work with. And then we've got the mesh here that's going to be replaced with photo edge, but if you use it, it actually should be fine. You can see we've got some more polycaps. These are for the idler and drive sprocket. Um, and those also are super nicely molded. You can tell there's a big difference between well-molded polycaps and not well-molded polycaps. It just makes working with them so much easier if there's no flash on them. And then the string, which we'll probably redo with a uh, towing rope. Now I've got the tracks, which are complete trash. They're shallow, they have flash on them, they've got molding pins on the guide teeth, I mean, if you want to use them, it's going to take a lot of work to make them look good. Unlike the Stug 3 Awesome B, these do not look good. Now I've got the decal sheet, which is fairly small, but gives you a lot of options. I think we're probably going to go for the 826 uh, tank, and um, they're actually pretty nice. They're nice and thin and uh, dry glossy, so hopefully we can get those to work well, unlike the past attempts. And now the moment you've all been waiting for the Aber upgrade set. So we'll start with sheet A here, and I don't think it's actually called sheet A, it's just I wanted to distinguish it from sheet, uh, from the other sheet, so I'm gonna call it sheet A. And as you can see, this is way, way bigger than the Stug sheet ever was. This has so many parts on it, and it's gonna take forever to do. And all these parts are minuscule, really, really tiny, and there's a ton of them. Um, so, I'm going to start showing you sprue uh, sheet C, uh, B in a second, but I'm going to talk about what this series is actually going to be. We're going to take an in-depth look at certain sections of the build week by week. So, first section, hole, and detailing that. Second section, probably stowage bins and fuel store. Uh, fuel tanks after that probably we'll start on the turret after that machine guns maybe and continuing on from there and we'll just take a nice slow look at every single part so we can do as good of a job as possible now we have the barrel and this is the most elaborate barrel I've ever seen it has the turned part another little brass piece for the end and then it's even got its own sheet of photo etch to replicate welds um, this is going to be a really cool barrel when we finish it, and I might even dedicate this to just a video with this and the machine gun because both of those are super well detailed, and I want to spend some time on them. Now you can see the little brass piece here has four little notches in it. Those notches actually had a lot of flash on them. Um, you can clean it right off with an X-Acto knife, but be warned, your X-Acto knife, you'll have to replace it after that um, because it'll tear it apart. But as usual, the barrel has really good rifling, the detail on it looks great, of course it looks better than the, uh, the left and right sided plastic one that they give you in the kit, and then we've got little pieces of photo etch to finish everything off. Now I'll move on to the instruction manual. And as you can see, there's the description on the front and then some instructions there. Now make sure you pay attention to this little thing that I'm pointing at right now because that's gonna tell you which uh, tank you want to build. I'm gonna build type B, which is the Russian one with the anti-aircraft gun, which is 826. So that works perfectly. Then for step one, idler, drive sprocket, road wheels. Step two, we've got all the torsion bar suspension going in and the back and front armor plates, a couple details on there. We'll dive into all of this um, 
in the videos. I think road wheels and tracks will also be another uh, section of the videos. Just thinking out loud right now. And then we can move on to assembling the tracks. And you can see that the tracks can actually be assembled with your normal styrene cement. Um, if you do want to use them, that's a great it's great that they can be assembled with styrene because I find that super glue is actually pretty brittle and can fall apart pretty easily. Then we've got upper hole details, attaching the upper hole, an engine deck, stowage, uh, the light cage, um, some more front hole details, and then moving on we have more of the engine deck, stowage bins, stuff like that. Uh, Part 10, we have the gasoline drums, unditching log, and snorkel. I don't think that the snorkel actually is included in um, part uh, type B, but you can see that you got to make sure to pay attention to this right here because this is going to make sure that you drill out the right holes for your type. So for part B, I think I'm going to be drilling out type 2. Then we got installation of the gun barrel make sure that you install the metal one because it'd be a bummer if you installed the plastic one there's a little tab that you have to cut out but trust me once you cut that out it fits like a dream then we've got hatch assembly um, some uh, handles and moving forward more hatches another snorkel from for the turret itself um, and this is all different sections so make sure to pay attention because We've got section A, B, C, and D, and I'm gonna be doing section B. So then you gotta pay attention to instruction uh, number 15, because that's gonna teach you how to build the machine gun. Then some lights and the figure, and you're actually done. So this is a really quick build if you're not doing the upgrades. Then you can paint the model that you chose. So for me, that's gonna be, number, uh, that's gonna be B. And that's it for this instruction manual. We still have photo etch. And now we have the three page photo etch manual plus the barrel manual later. Um, this thing is double sided and has three separate sheets of instructions. So you've got six pages to go through here. Uh, for reference, I believe that the Stug had two pages. Um, and so this is going to be a serious project. That's why I'm going to split it up into multiple build sessions. Um, if you guys do like the idea, make sure to let me know in the comments. But you can see that there's just different parts and pieces that you're going to be adding. So you can see that we've got turret details, hatch details, stuff like that on this page. Then moving down. I believe we have the machine gun and other hatch details. You can see that there's a whole giant section devoted just to the machine gun. Moving on, we have stowage bins and stuff like that, as well as the fuel tanks. And these ammo boxes are actually workable. So I might just devote a section, I'm probably just gonna devote a section to the uh, ammo boxes and the machine gun and the barrel itself. And um, and then another one to stowage and these fuel tanks because these actually have a full wiring setup that we need to put in. Um, this is an incredibly detailed photo etch upgrade set and uh, I want to milk it for everything it's got. So you guys can see how to do it and follow along easily and at your own pace. Another thing I really like about the Aber PE set that came in this kit is that it actually came with stencils for the wires, for the handles, and stuff like that. It just makes it so much better to, uh, so much easier to make a good result um, versus just looking at a diagram and making it yourself. So that's something that's really great about this kit. And if you want to do a T55, make sure to get this one. And last but not least, we have the entire instruction sheet for just the barrel, which tells you how detailed this barrel is. You can see that we've got to install a bunch of weld beads and different bolts and stuff onto the fume extractor. Then we attach the brass piece and cut off that little piece in the mantlet to install it. 
And that's all for this kit. Since those tracks are atrocious, I'm going to replace them with a set of mini art workable tracks. RMSH workable tracks. That's going to take conversion, so I guess it's time to fire up the old 3D printer. I'm super excited for this in-depth video we'll take. Of course, if you liked the video, make sure to drop me a like below, and if you want to be notified whenever the next video drops, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you want to support my channel and get some cool stuff in return, join Samuel Fisher, Night Shift, and Panzermeister36 on Patreon. Links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.